Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 161. Shizun, let me take you flying. Ye Wangzi is not a man at all. After a few moments of silence, the crowd burst into an uproar. All the guests in the hall turned pale as their gazes all focused on Ye Wangzi. Her head was hung down, she closed her eyes and said nothing. Not a man. This handsome and upright young man was actually, a woman? This realization was like a drop of water entering a hot wok, instantly causing a wave of heat to rise. Some people sucked in a breath of cold air and immediately after, the buzzing sound exploded like a wok exploding with a crackling sound of splashing boiling oil. Ye Wangzi is a woman. Oh heavens, how could? No wonder Nangong Si didn't blame her just now. He clearly knew about this. Then Song Kaiyu Tong just. She is framing someone to protect herself. This is too sinister. If you didn't do it, then you didn't do it. Why do you need to accuse others just to clear your name? But I still can't believe it. How could Ye Wangzi be a woman? I can't tell at all. Nangong Liu's eyes became cold. He stared at the black clothed man's dark eyes and said, Sir, please don't speak nonsense. Where did you get the evidence? Nangong Si gasped for breath and stared at Ye Wangzi for a while before saying hoarsely, You, remove the voice changing spell. If you do not have a guilty conscience, then release Nangong Si. The black clothed man said, Fortunately, although your son has a wild temper, he is still a righteous man. He is not as cold-hearted and ruthless as you. Seeing that Nangong Liu's face was covered in cold sweat, the black-clothed man clenched his fists and did not say a word. He coldly said, What? Go ahead and release him. Nangong Liu said in a casual way, I am merely disciplining an unscrupulous son. I cannot have an outsider like yourself come and put on airs on our own home. When he said this, Although he didn't admit that what the man in black had said was true, those who believe it took it as further confirmation but those who didn't believe in the black clothed man's words couldn't help but waver. They once again looked at Ye Wangzi's handsome face, wanting to find some clues about her true gender. At this time, someone from the crowd shouted, Sect leader Nangong Lu, you are in the wrong. Everyone turned their heads and saw Mei Hanks Yu, dressed in a fox fur coat, looking dignified and graceful. He stood in the light of a candle smiling and said, although Miss Ye is a valiant and imposing woman, she is still a woman. The sect leader, as a man, should have mercy on the fairer sex and as an elder, should be generous and kind. How can you bully a girl like this just so you won't lose face for Rufeng sect? As he talked, he walked to the front of the hall slowly and smiled as he continued I am not ashamed to admit this. I have met Miss Ye before at Peach Blossom Springs and felt that she was valiant and different from most of the same gender. I greatly admired her but I was stupid, so I offended Miss Ye with my careless words, causing her to feel disgusted, and had an argument with her. After being on receiving end of Miss Ye's exceptional skill, I couldn't help but marvel at the outstanding skills of the female cultivators of the Rufeng sect and realized that Miss Ye must be an inspiration to them. However, seeing how the sect leader was acting today. Heh, I feel like the brilliant and learned men of Rufeng sect do not deserve such a proud and extraordinary beauty. Young Master Mei, you and Ye Wangzi have only met once, it's only natural that you would be mistaken. Nangong Liu's expression was dark, but he was still biting his lips with a grin. He said, considering the fact that you are from Kunlun Taxiu Palace, I will not bother you but you better not make any mistakes. The way he spoke was no longer as calm and composed as it was in the beginning. The man in black chuckled softly and said, The name of young Master Mei is well known everywhere. If he can't tell whether a person is a man or a woman, perhaps no other person in the world can. When Nangong Lu heard him say so, he could not help but burn with anger. He said stiffly, Young man, you had just accused Ye Wangzi of bullying Song Kaiyu Tong and now you are saying that Ye Wangzi is a woman. You are trying to hurt the reputation of our Rufeng sect by turning things around like this. 
You being upright is bad for the Rufeng sect's reputation. The black clothed man said, If I don't make such a move, how can I let young Master Nangong see clearly see Miss Song's true nature? If he marries the wrong person, would that be enough to make him feel disgusted for the rest of his life? But what you just clearly said was reasonable. Furthermore, if Ye Wangzi was a woman, how did the sin of our on Song Kaiyu Tong's wrist disappear? Ask her yourself, why are you asking me? The black clothed man sneered, what's more, your Rufeng sect has thousands of male disciples. When the sect leader has free time, he can interrogate them one by one. He will definitely find a satisfactory answer. This matter was related to the Rufeng sect's reputation and so everyone was silent, no one spoke a word, but the contempt and curiosity in their eyes could not be hidden. Nangong Lu only felt a prickle of thorns in his back as he stood still for a while. After some time, he turned his head and shouted towards Ye Wangzi, Come here. Tell me yourself, did Miss Song wrongly accuse you? Nangong Lu stared at Ye Wangzi's face. He was making a gamble and thought he still held the most important bargaining chip in his hand. He knew that Ye Wangzi had a deep affection for his son, and she definitely did not want the reputation of the Rufeng sect to be ruined. You tell everyone what your real identity is. Ye Wangzi had always been very obedient. Since she was young, she had always been the most obedient piece on his chessboard. He even clearly remembered when Ye Wangzi was 13 years old, she was ordered to come to the magnificent hall of the Rufeng sect. The gate of the hall was tightly shut, leaving only the two of them behind. He sat on the cold pedestal and looked down. The 13-year-old girl still hasn't cut her hair yet. She wore a green coat, her hair was tied up in a satin ponytail and she had a small silver bracelet on her hand. He smiled at her and said, Ye Wangzi, for you to come here today means that you already understand the situation. Ye Wangzi knelt down and kowtowed, Yes, sect leader. Your foster father has been heavily injured many times before, with his muscles and bones damaged. He is no longer suitable to be the leader of the hidden guards. You are his adopted daughter, and also Sierra's childhood sweetheart. As for the others, I can't trust them, I can only trust you. Ye Wangzi didn't get up. She was still lying quietly on the ground, with her slender neck exposed under her bun, just like a lamb that was about to be slaughtered by the neck. Nangong Lu said, Your talent is extraordinary and your future is immeasurable. I have the intention of making you the leader of the hidden guards of the Rufeng sect and then rule one of the cities within the 72 cities. In this way, you will be able to share both your foster father's duties and become the right-hand man of my son. From now on, he is the light, while you are the shadow. You two will share the glory of the Rufeng sect for a hundred years. He paused. However, if you don't want to, then I'll understand. Your foster father can still hold out for some time while I look for a more suitable candidate. I know in my heart that it is too much of a sacrifice for you so you don't need to force yourself. After Nangong Lu finished speaking, she changed her sitting posture and waited patiently. This girl had no parents and no one to rely on. He was absolutely certain that she could only rely on him. He waited for her to nod. Finally, Ye Wangzi straightened her back and looked at him silently. For a moment, Nangong Lu shuddered with fear, as if this girl had seen through his schemes and his fake smile. But the next moment, Ye Wangzi said, I owe my life to my foster father. In order to repay Yufu's kindness, there is nothing I am unwilling to do. Nangong Lu was quiet for a moment before he sighed, I can only apologize for being unfair to you. Ye Wangzi calmly and indifferently said, It is I who should be thanking the sect leader, my vision got clearer. Nangong Lu changed the topic, however, the Rufeng sect has always viewed women in an inferior light. Women are seen to be weak and powerless. In this world, only a man would be able to convince the masses and therefore only men are worthy to lead a city. Forget the past, since you're smart, you should know how to do it. Ye Wangzi was silent for a moment. 
In front of Nangong Lu, she coldly took off the silver bracelet and the satin ribbon on her hand. Then, she took off her jacket, leaving only her pure white robe. After doing all this, she let go of her braided hair and changed it into a ponytail and tied her hair up high. The sunlight came in, shining onto her body. Her back was upright, her expression resolute. Although she was still young, her temperament was already like that of a steadfast cypress tree. That's right. In order to ensure that his plan will work, he reminded her, you should dress up like this from now on. But don't forget, there's still your voice. Ye Wangzi lowered her eyelashes. She had already noticed when she entered that there was a pair of golden scissors set up in front of her seat. She picked up the pair of scissors, hit it hard and swiped it down between her throat. Blood dripped. The old melody vanished, never to be changed. She slowly spat out the eight character of the spell, then closed her eyes and tossed the scissors to the floor. The scissors were stained with blood. Nangong Lu stared at it for a while before replying, Good, good. From now on, you will be the successor to the leader of the Dark City, young master Ye of the Rufeng sect. Even if there is sea air, I will ask him to let you. Ye Wangzi opened her mouth, but the sound that came out was already different. It was a young man's voice. If I may ask the sect leader. From now on, do not let Yufa be troubled alone. I am willing to share his duties. Thus, Nangong Lu knew Ye Wangzi very well. Ten years had passed, and she had learned the manners of a man impeccably. She had even taken a secret medicine every day, enduring the pain it caused her every single day to be able to grow into a male-like body and figure. In his eyes, she was a dog raised by the Rufeng sect. In order to return the favor of raising her, she would never betray him. Ten years ago, she cut her own throat and bled, forever changing her voice. Today, she wouldn't disappoint him either. He was betting that Ye Wangzi would help him. As long as Ye Wangzi declared that I am not a woman, what could they do even if the others didn't believe it? The black-clothed man obviously thought the same. He took two steps forward and stood in front of Ye Wangzi, raising his hand to block her way, and said, Nangong Lu, Miss Ye has already spent all her efforts and years for your Rufeng sect, devoting her life to you. Now that you can't argue, do you want to use the rest of her life as a sacrifice? Nangong Lu was just about to open his mouth to argue again, when suddenly in the distant night sky, an orange-red light rose into the sky and suddenly exploded someone had caught a spirit deer. However, it didn't seem to matter at all. No one cared who got the second place, as everyone's gaze was still locked tightly on the center of the hall. The tables and chairs were lying about on the floor and the table on the dais was almost split in half, the mysterious black-clothed man stood between Nangong Lu and Ye Wangzi. Tonight, the groom was trapped in the barrier by his own father, while the bride was kneeling on the ground, her face full of tears, weeping piteously. This was really too unexpected. From accusation of illicit affairs, to a young master's rebellion against his father, a woman pretending to be a man and a cornered sect leader who dare not admit the truth. These excitements would probably be lively discussed in tea houses and restaurants for the next three to five years. Who would care about those poor spiritual deer? Therefore, no one noticed a sinister red hole slowly appearing in the sky over the dense forest until the sounds of fireworks suddenly echoed one after another, making the crows in the forest flew away, fleeing to the depths of the night. All twenty fireworks were set off at once. The fireworks exploded at the same time, illuminating the night sky like a sea of blood. It was only then that the people inside the hall of poetry and music felt that something was amiss and rushed to the fence to take a look. What's going on? Why did everyone's fireworks explode at the same time? Look. Up in the sky. What is that? The sky is splitting. It's a heavenly rift. Instantly, the hall got dead silent, followed by cries of surprise and screams. It's a heavenly rift. How could there be a heavenly rift in the upper cultivation world? It's above the hunting grounds. 
Brother. My shikshan is still over there. Sister. The crowd was like fishes swimming in a pond, tightly packed together in one area. Panic and shock occurred as if bait were thrown into the pond, causing waves on the water surface. At this time, no one cared about any marital scandals. The world is full of such torrid secrets anyways. In order to save face, Nangong Lu shouted with a sound amplifying spell, My lords, please calm down. It's only a rift on the ghost realm barrier. Everyone is in Rafeng sect. Nangong Lu will see to it that no harm will come to our guests. As he spoke, he waved his hand, summoning his sword. Stepping on the hilt of his resplendent blue sword, he brandished it and stood in the middle of the sword and head out in the night breeze. Guards of the five branches of the Rufeng sect, immediately follow me to the forest grounds to investigate. The rest of the elders and disciples guard the hall of poetry and music platform and ensure that the guests are well considered. After he finished speaking, he unexpectedly led the guards of the five branches himself, seemingly to escape the interrogation of the black-clothed man. The group hastily rushed towards the Xiaoya courtyard riding their swords. The mess of the wedding banquet wasn't even cleaned up or cleared up at all. Everything is fine? How could this suddenly happen? Yeah, the upper cultivation world has never had a heavenly rift by the ghost realm. What? What the hell is going on here? On the beaded and jade inlaid pavilion, people were anxious. These cultivators of the upper cultivation world were used to living a prestigious and comfortable life. Facing the sudden invasion of the ghost realm, their fear was greater than their sense of duty. It would be fine if they had to kill a lonely huge demon, but heavenly split is a totally different matter. If the gap opened was only in the upper levels of hell and only ordinary ghosts came out, then it would be fine. However, if it was the same as what has occurred in Kaidi town five years ago where the breach was up to the infinite level of hell, well. They shuddered at the thought of a grand master like Chu Wanning dying in that brutal battle. They could not help but feel threatened as they squeezed to the edge of the scarlet railings and gazed at the crimson red split in the sky in the distance. Chu Wanning stood up and said to Shui Zhenyong, sect leader, the color of this heavenly rift isn't right. Once the rift has opened, the breach is most likely up to lowest levels of hell. I'm worried about Xue Meng and the other participants. I'll go take a look. With that, he jumped up from the ground and went straight to the railings. Under the astonished gazes of the crowd, he leaped lightly on the next vaulted roof right in front of everyone's surprised eyes and quickly disappeared into the distance. Yu Heng. Xue Zhenyong was about to call for him, but Chu Wanning had already disappeared into the dark night. He cursed silently and wanted to jump down as well, but his shoulder was grabbed. Turning around, a bronze mask that was bearing his teeth appeared in front of him. The man in black patted him on the back and said in a low voice, Uncle, you stay here and guard Ant. Please be rest assured with me by Shi Zun's side. Xue Zhenyong was shocked. Mo. The man in black raised his hand and gently placed it on his lips, shaking his head. Xue Zhenyong never thought that the man in black would actually be Mo Ran. Mo Ran didn't wait for him to ask any further questions. He launched himself with one hand and jumped into the darkness like a falcon. His cloak was rolling around and billowing like ink, and in a short while, he disappeared behind the same vaulted roof as Chu Wanning. She's on. Mo Ran used Ching Gong to run along the eaves of the house. It seemed too slow, so he summoned a sword that was bound to him. The sword quickly caught up to Chu Wanning. He raised his hand and lifted his mask. He pushed the hideous bronze mask to the side of his forehead, revealing a handsome face. Wait for me. Chu Wanning's eyes widened suddenly, it was you. Come up, I'll take Shi Zun over there on the sword. I'll tell she's on all the details on the way. Chu Wanning held onto the hand that was extended towards him, raised his feet and got lifted up, landing steadily on the blade. He wanted to let go of Mo Ran, but the thick and rough hand tightened its hold. Mo Ran was standing behind him. As he spoke, 
The unique scorching breath belonging to the young man brushed against the back of his ears, making the swift and cold night wind feel scalding hot. Moran said, this sword's energy is too strong. It flies too fast. She's on, hold on tight. Both of them rode the wind on the sword and Chu Wanning asked, everything that happened in the hall just now, was it you who planned it all out? Yes. I've been traveling around the world all these years. I have heard quite a lot of things related to Song Kaiyutong. Mo Ran said, although she doesn't have the guts to do great evils like murdering people or slaughtering a whole city, she had the capability to do deeds that could lead to that. If she were to really marry Nangong Si and become the young master's wife of the Rufeng sect, then I'm afraid that the sect will probably be even worse off than it is right now. To this, Chu Wanning replied, the Rufeng sect will not be any worse off than it is now. After he finished the sentence, he frowned and glanced at Mo Ran's black cloak again. Doubts arose in his heart. Speaking of which, how did you know that Ye Wangzi was a woman? End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 162. Shizun, I will fight with you. I won't hide it from Shizun. I already knew about Ye Wangzi since we were at the Peach Blossom Spring. In fact, he already knew all about it from his previous life but this truth is something he couldn't tell Chu Wanning. Mo Ran smiled and said, when I was walking down the road one time, I heard Mei Hanks Yu and the other disciples from Kunlun Taxiu Palace talking about her. At that time, I believed that Mei Hanks Yu's eyes could not be wrong. After that, I carefully observed her and became even more certain that Miss Ye was not a man. Why? Didn't Chi Sun notice that she always wore her collar pulled up really high? Her robes were the kind that fully covers the neck and the style was very strange. It's normal if she has one or two of them but all of her robes are like that. I didn't notice. Mo Ran gestured at Chu Wanning with his empty hand. The normal collars were up to this position, more or less. As he spoke, his fingers inadvertently touched Chu Wanning's Adam's apple. That slightly protruding part was very fragile and he couldn't help but rub it for a moment. He thought that his Shizun was fierce and untame, yet he exposed such delicate part of his throat to his fingers and allowed him to caress it. This kind of feeling was so inciting. In a moment of absent-mindedness, he forgot to look at the path ahead. The sword was flying swift and fiercely. He heard Chu Wanning's warning of lookout, but it was too late. The heavy sword crashed straight into a towering tree. Bang! A loud sound rang out. Mo Ran was completely dumbfounded. He only remembered to hold Chu Wanning's hand tightly. Anxiously, he called out Wanning. In a low voice, but because he was too anxious and the sound of the tree's breaking was so loud, Chu Wanning didn't hear it clearly. Chu Wanning was so angry that he nearly fainted. What kind of sword flight technique is this? Wouldn't it be better to run with your feet? Why did he have to be so smug about his sword flight technique? The two of them fell to the ground with Mo Ran hitting the ground first. His back slammed into the rocky forest ground. Although he wasn't injured, it was definitely painful. But as he lay on his back and watched the stars twinkling through the branches, he suddenly felt very happy. Ha ha ha. Fortunately, the person who fell below was him and not Chu Wanning. He couldn't help but laugh. Although Chu Wanning had bumped into his chest and caused his ribs to hurt, he still couldn't help but want to laugh despite the pain. He narrowed his eyes and grinned, his dimples were deep and it was full of fascination. Chu Wanning looked up and saw him laughing. He couldn't help but be furious. What are you laughing at? Did you become stupid from the fall? Mo Ran took the opportunity to hug him, pressing him into his embrace. Although the timing was off, at the moment, he just wanted to raise his hand to touch Chu Wanning's hair. As the thought came to his head, his body was quick to act on it. Chu Wanning was right. He probably became stupid from the fall. She's on. He rubbed Chu Wanning's hair. The dark night seemed to have given him a key. The box that imprisoned his private love was opened. 
the intimacy in his words could no longer be contained and it overflowed. This call was too intimate and so full of longing that Chu Wanning froze at first and then panic rose in his heart. He hurriedly gathered his fierce dignity and said, What are you calling me out for? You can even fall while riding a sword. What kind of skill is that? Mo Ran sighed softly and finally caressed his hair again. He cleared his throat and said with a bitter smile. Shizun, it's my fault. Please get off of me. In his heart, he wanted to ask Shizun to lie in his arms even for a little while but knew that this is something he obviously couldn't ask his Shizun. Chu Wanning's face darkened. He stood up quickly and pulled Mo Ran up as well. How are you? He asked stiffly. Are you hurt anywhere? I'm fine. Mo Ran smiled. My skin is rough and my flesh is thick. I can withstand such a fall. Chu Wanning was about to say something when he suddenly saw a wilted flower on Mo Ran's head. It had probably fallen off and just happened to fall on top of his head. He couldn't help but squint his eyes. Your head. Is there any cut in it? Mo Ran raised his hand and touched it. It was fine. No, it bloomed. Then Chu Wanning casually plucked the flower and handed it to him expressionlessly. Mo Ran got a little embarrassed. He rubbed the back of his head shyly but his smiles grew even more brighter. Chu Wanning turned his head and coughed lightly. Since nothing's wrong, then let's move on. Mo Ran said, you. I won't. Chu Wanning angrily turned his head and glared at him. We're using Ching Gong. Ching Gong it is. Mo Ran waved his hand and reluctantly put the heavy sword back into his kinkin bag. But the deeper they went into the forest garden, the denser the trees became. The speed of sword riding was actually would not be as fast as Ching Gong. Moreover, Chu Wanning's Ching Gong skills were quite good. He schemed the ground and moved very quickly. A cool breeze brushed past his face, calming Mo Ran's heart that got agitated a while ago. Chu Wanning's voice suddenly came from the front. His tone was very calm as he seemed to casually asked, So. Song Kaiyutong has a mole on her leg. How did you know that? Mo Ran was stunned and was caught off guard again. With a bang, the awe-inspiring Grandmaster Mo once again hit his head on a pine tree. Chu Wanning. Are you night blind? Oh. No. Mo Ran said. I'm sorry Shizun, I'm a little absent-minded today. Chu Wanning frowned slightly. Then, as if he had figured something out, he said angrily, Does the mole on Song Kaiyutong's leg make you absent-minded? It's most important for a cultivator to have a clear mind and few desires. If you're so shaken by a beauty, what's the point of cultivating? Mo Ran was speechless for a moment. He felt that Chu Wanning's words were very reasonable. But Chu Wanning had the wrong person. The beauty he was coveting was not Kaiyu Tong, but the man in front of him who had a fierce temper and was currently roaring like a snow leopard. He sighed and looked at Chu Wanning with gentle eyes. Shizun, I don't like Miss Song's appearance. You're thinking too much. She has a mole on her leg. That was something I heard from the Xian Yuan Pavilion during the auction. I didn't see it with my own eyes. Shizun, please don't be angry. What's there to be angry about? Fine, let me ask you. Since Ye Wangzi is a woman, how did the cinnabar on Song Kaiyu Tong's hand disappear? This shouldn't be a coincidence, right? It really isn't a coincidence. Does Shizun still remember the bracelet I gave to Song Kaiyu Tong before? N. There's a spell on that bracelet that I created. Mo Ran paused. It took me four days to create it. It's not very good, but in a short time, as long as Song Kaiyu Tong wears that bracelet, it can cover the cinnabar on her hand that was put by Han Lin Divine Hand. Chu Wanning didn't speak, but his expression was somewhat unpleasant. He felt that Mo Ran was hiding something from him. Mo Ran had changed a lot these years. He had learned to channel 70% of his meddling nature to meddle into other people's business. 
Though his interference is meant to help out when he saw injustice along his way, it seemed a lot of trouble to go through. He even came to the point of creating a tiny spell to expose a person's true nature and prevent her from marrying into Rufeng's sect. It was really too much. Unless Song Kaiyutong and Mo Ran had great enmity between them or Ye Wangzi and Mo Ran had a deep relationship, then Mo Ran shouldn't interfere in this matter. In this silence, Mo Ran also sensed Chu Wanning's mood. He flew a foot behind Chu Wanning and said, She's un. What? Chu Wanning asked indifferently. Naturally, he couldn't talk about the matters of his previous life, but Mo Ran didn't want to make Chu Wanning feel uncomfortable. He thought about it, then decided to tell Chu Wanning half of his true feelings. She's un, Ye Wangzi is a very good person. She spent a huge amount of money in the Xian Yuan pavilion and saved a woman she didn't know. You are aware of this. Mm. You see, Ye Wangzi likes Nangong Si. Yes. I notice it tonight. It's good that Chi Zun can see it. Because I already knew Miss Ye's true identity, I have always understood her feelings. As for Song Kaiyutong, she didn't know that Ye Wangzi was a woman, so she only respected her and initially does not have any evil intentions towards her. But if she marries Nangong Si, then the Rufeng sect won't necessarily keep Ye Wangzi's secret from her. Given Kaiyutong's personality, she will certainly view any woman who has feelings for Nangong Si as a thorn in her side. Mo Ran paused. He thought of his previous life, when Song Kaiyutong sensed the secret love between him and Chu Wanning. She was so jealous that she took advantage of his absence from the palace to pull off all ten of Chu Wanning's fingernails. What would have happened if Ye Wangzi fell into her hands? The answer was obvious. Though the deeds that Song Kaiyutong were capable of was only the likes of pulling off nails and nothing really sensational, she also had the capacity to hide behind people who are capable of greater evils. If it were for her benefit, she has no qualms lending her support to such tyrants and work to further their cause. In this world, doing good and doing evil were the same. Both were things that fell from the sky. The tallest person would be the first to get hit and bear the brunt of it, just like how the kindest person would be crushed to death. Chu Sun for instance who was pushed out by the hands of the weak and offered as a sacrifice. The same goes with the likes of Taxi and Jun for being the most vicious, was targeted and killed by 10,000 people. However, if it weren't for the accumulation of one lesser evil deed after another, if it weren't for those petty offenses that left one scar after another on Mo Ran's body and mind, then in this world, would there really be an emperor Ta, Mo Wiyu? Chu Wanning said, meddling in this matter, aren't you afraid of inviting trouble to yourself? Mo Ran also knew that this time, he had involved himself too much. However, in his previous life, he had dragged Ye Wangzi into the sea of blood. In this life, even if the rise and fall of the Rufeng sect had nothing to do with him, he still owed Ye Wangzi. Therefore, even if he overstepped his boundaries, even if it would arouse suspicion, he still did this matter without any hesitation. Not only Chu Wanning, but he also wanted the people that he had wronged in his previous life to have a better life. He still hoped that he could atone for his sins. I do worry about those matters. Mo Ran said, but since I know the truth, I had to do the right thing for my peace of mind. Although Chu Wanning still felt that Mo Ran's actions were too rash, after hearing him say this, he could somehow understand. Just then, a strong fishy sweet smell suddenly came with the wind. Along with it, there was also some kind of powerful spiritual current that suddenly appeared in front of them. Before Chu Wanning could react, Mo Ran's expression changed. He said in a low voice, it's not good. It's the Zhenlong chess formation. It's in that direction. In the thick night, the fishy smell filled the air. Ghosts and monsters were already crawling out from the heavenly rift. Five pillars of light rose from the ground, respectively of metal, wood, water, fire, and earth essences. It was exactly the same as the incident at Kaidi Town. Chu Wanning's eyes were cold. It's him. 
Moran naturally knew who he was talking about. Chinchinch Lake, Peach Blossom Spring, Kaidi Town. After five years of silence, he had returned today. It was that person who had always been hiding behind the scenes, that fake Gushin. However, Moran had a vague feeling that this Zhenlong chess formation was completely different from the previous ones. There was no disguise nor concealment, that person seemed to feel that victory was within his grasp and he was determined to win. The birds in the forest were startled, flapping their wings and fleeing in all directions. Mo Ran sprinted with Chu Wanning towards the bottom of the heavenly rift, one in front of the other. When they got closer and saw the ghosts and monsters surging out from the crack, Mo Ran muttered, The infinite hell, the barrier to the infinite hell. This time, it was actually the same as the incident five years ago at Kaidi Town. The barrier breached up to the infinite hell. Mo Ran turned around in a panic and grabbed Chu Wanning's arm. She's on. Don't go. Don't be silly. Moran also knew that this was silly, but in his two lifetimes, he had witnessed the heavenly rift twice. The consequences of those two incidents were nightmares that he would never forget. Now that he was in the middle of a third one, how could he not be worried? But what was the use of saying I don't want you to go to Chu Wanning? It was extremely difficult to change a person's nature. For someone like Chu Wanning, even if he was given a thousand or ten thousand chances to choose, he still wouldn't turn around and run away in the face of a disaster. Thus, Mo Ran stared at Chu Wanning, not knowing what to say. Chu Wanning glanced at him and said, Don't worry, I will be cautious. After he finished speaking, he raised his hand and summoned Tian Wen. Golden light flowed between his slender fingers and sparks flew in all directions. Mo Ran stared at Chu Wanning's eyes and finally sighed. A dazzling brilliance shot out from his hand. Jiangui broke through the air as Mo Ran held it in his hand. The fiery red brilliance of Jiangui and the golden light of Tianwen reflected each other. The two weapons met after a long time. They were both stable and powerful, unstoppable. All right, I understand. I won't try to stop you. Whatever Shizun wants to do, I will accompany you. The resplendent light shone in their eyes. The bright red was burning the liquid gold, and the liquid gold was dyed a deep red. I'll go with Shizun. Looking at Mo Ran's resigned appearance of wanting to fight alongside him, Chu Wanning felt helplessly warmed and fond. Mo Ran's eyes were filled with too many emotions. Some of them seemed to have gone beyond the feelings of master and disciple, but he couldn't be sure what those additional feelings were. So, he raised his hand and poked Mo Ran's forehead, saying, Don't expect a reward. Mo Ran was stunned for a moment. He then pulled down Chu Wanning's hand and held it in his palm. He tried his best to restrain himself from kissing it. He smiled and said, Well, if there is no reward, then there is no reward. Shall we? Like a celestial shadow in the night, the holy weapon's light met with the golden red light and instantly reached the heart of the jungle. Ganquin Lake. Chu Wanning and Mo Ran concealed their auras and hid in the orange grove, looking in that direction. The flow of the spiritual energy that was supplying the lake was cut off. In the harsh cold night, a thick layer of ice formed on the surface of the lake. Four formations were drawn around the lake, each with a weapon embedded within. Chu Wanning said in a low voice, four holy weapons of different attributes. Mo Ran was stunned at first, and then said, the theft of holy weapons in the past five years was indeed related to him. But in Kaidi town, he used living people's heart. Why did he suddenly change the array? Mo Ran wanted to say something more, but Chu Wanning raised a finger and stopped him. Be quiet, look over there. Following his gaze, Mo Ran saw a group of guards of the Rufeng sect slowly walking slowly on the surface of the lake. Along with them were the young cultivators chosen to participate in the hunt. A steady stream of spiritual energy was being drawn out of their chests and gathered towards the holy weapons of different attributes. This powerful and pure spiritual energy made the holy weapons in the array shine brighter and stronger. 
the light shot straight into the sky, feeding energy to the heavenly rift, forcibly tearing open the breach to the infinite hell. Moran's opened eyes widened. What are they doing? It seems that these disciples are not in their right mind. They were probably being controlled by Zhenlong Chess formation. Chu Wanning's eyebrows were tightly knitted. His expression was gloomy as his gaze swept over the people on the lake surface. Suddenly, he abruptly froze and his face turned pale. Unexpectedly, he tightly grasped Mo Ran's shoulder, his fingers trembling. What's wrong? Mo Ran turned his head and a moment later, he saw a familiar figure walking amongst the crowd. He said in horror, Shwe Meng. End chapter.